A few weeks ago, somebody asked me, why do you call yourself rambling activist? And I had to explain I didn't call myself that. It was a label I was given. But the reasons are a little more complicated. as a child. I'd walk out to here, pick berries from the hedgerows, pick mushrooms in the fields, watch the birds, watch the wildlife, the hares boxing, and bit by bit, over many years, it was taken away. What's your response to that? It becomes very personal. What you identify with is being taken away from you. And that's what made me into an environmentalist, but more than that, it made me into an activist. Real change involves acts of transgression. It doesn't matter if your environment is being taken away or you're responding to that. To take that on requires transgression. Rambling made me transgress. It's because if you're walking on land, in England at least, walking on land is an act of transgression. You're walking on what is portrayed to be somebody's private property, even though you have a right to do so. If you look at an Ordnance Survey map, it shows you various paths and it always says that a path on the map is not evidence of a real path on the ground. The problem is, as time has gone by, it's become more complex to exercise your rights in the countryside as they've tried to open the countryside up. And it's all about this battle between land rights and access rights. And now we have permissive paths and trails and your rights there aren't the same. And then you have the whole category of access land where you have all sorts of restrictions on what you can and can't do, otherwise you lose your rights of access. Following footpath is a legal exercise. There's a thing called the definitive map, and that tells you where all the legal paths are and you have a right to walk. And by understanding that, you get to realise how local government works, how paths are created and how they're maintained. And that makes you political, because you suddenly realise that how paths are maintained how your rights are looked after is a political act. Here we have a stile. It's broken. It's overgrown. Most people can be put off by this, but what can you do about it? You need to be a passive participant. It's your legal right to clear these obstructions. What the Highways Act allows, section 333, I may clear as much as the obstruction as is necessary to pass. And so when I go out walking, I take my little secateurs, and as I progress, I just keep the paths clear. It's my legal right to do so. The law says that. And yet, many ramblers feel quite uncomfortable when they see me doing this. Here's the clear gap. The style is, of course, a responsibility of the local authority. That's for another day. And so I'll progress my way up the hill come to this style and this is quite interesting this is the county boundary Oxfordshire this side Northamptonshire on the other side and what you find is when you start rambling different local authorities implement the law differently different officers implement the law differently this is Northamptonshire's definitive map slightly different design in Northamptonshire they've privatized council services and so the officers react very differently to complaints In addition to secateurs, I also carry a small saw. A few months ago, a tree had come down. You can see people have been trying to struggle around the edge. My choice, I went through the middle of it. It only took me 15 minutes to do. You can become part of enforcing your rights. And that is what makes them real. Coming to the other side of the, the county boundary, you find this. This is the ancient road. Before they created the new road, this hollow way was for centuries the road. As you get into paths, you realise that the world changes. You can see the progression of things in the countryside, perhaps more easily than you can in the towns. It was this process of learning, of engaging, of exercising rights, which turned just rambling activism into a greater idea of activism. 
of transgressing those things which perhaps we don't talk about, perhaps we, we let lie, because it was a way of facilitating my access to the countryside, my involvement in the countryside, and enjoying that which I had a legal right to do, but perhaps not everybody wanted to enable me to do. Getting to the top of the hill, you get a view across Banbury and the, the ironstone slab beyond. A bit cloudy today, the mists are coming in and out, but it's a very nice place to, to view the town on a clear day. But as I turn to carry on my way, what do I find? Barbed wire. This isn't legal. It's quite ironic that it's over the top of the footpath sign because it shows the farmer has done it quite recently. The law says this shouldn't be here. If I try and cross this dial, I could hurt myself. So as well as the secateurs and the saw, I also carry, wrapped up to keep them dry, a pair of very heavy duty wire clippers. This isn't for clipping the wire, this is for taking the barbs off. What's illegal here isn't the wire, it's the barbs. So by taking the barbs away, I'm, I'm not only making it safe for me to continue, I'm, I'm actually you know, making the piece of wire that's illegal, legal. Now what the law says, section 164 of the Highways Act, the Highways Authority can tell a farmer that he has six months to remove the barbed wire. Well, that means there's six months of people who might be hurting themselves. I mean, it, I might get hurt as I cross the wire. You can see uh, there's a big scratch on my arm there from the bramble as I went through the, the stile by the bridge earlier. This is property. I have just, in effect, cause criminal damage because I've taken a piece of barbed wire and I've clipped the barbs off. And very soon after getting into footpath and access I got into criminal damage law because you are doing certain things which of themselves are illegal. What the law actually says that you can do certain things which damage property in order to avoid harm to you or to the interests of other people. This is section 5 of the Criminal Damage Act what it says is, if you have a good reason for needing to do the damage in order to protect other people's interests, property or well-being, and it's required to be done immediately, then you can go ahead and you can take that action. That sounds quite obscure, quite minimal. It's actually the basis of some very major protest actions. This is the most recent, where uh, a pair tried to get at some jets which were going to Saudi Arabia, which would have bombed Yemen and they were acquitted because they had a, a good reason for doing so. As I progressed through rambling and footpath and become an environmentalist, I suddenly realised all that stuff I learnt for the innocent idea of rambling was also applicable to the idea of activism. And that came to a head at nearby USA of Crowton in 1985. And today we're using a public bridleway, it's still open, they haven't closed it all, well they haven't yet. And uh, using the protection of the Highways Act 1980, the access to Countryside Act 1949 and 68, we are perfectly legally travelling across a front, front line communication space. Those walks across Crowton later got me involved in all sorts of other campaigns, where this idea of using the law to affect change as our right as being part of this society became really useful and since then I've gone on to do many other things but but it still comes down to this idea of transgression that sometimes the law itself enables you to be transgressive for example in 1992 I jumped over the fence into an outlying compound of the Harbour Laboratory to find the Atomic Energy Authority were illegally dumping radioactive waste in a society where certain interests dominate. To enforce the legal rights of those who have them but are ignored is a transgressive act. And over history it's minorities enforcing their legal rights and the transgression, the social transgression that creates, which creates change. This is the inward journey of activism. This is how activism allows you to express yourself, your, your beliefs, your ideals, and make them concrete in the real world and effect change, real change, that does, in the end, make that greater social change happen.